Hey guys, Ash Lane here. Today we're going to go over some Town Hall 10 3-star attacks without max heroes. So we're going to do a couple different types of attacks. Just going to start with a traditional go wipe attack. Now, this can be turned into to viable 3-star attempts if you're not going up against a max uh, base. So even on a base where you think 2 stars will be your ultimate goal, you can plan beforehand to try to change it into a 3-star attack if things are going well. In Jed, even though he's hitting his mirror and he has far from max heroes even for town hall nine he's going to go ahead and pre uh, plan the the, uh, the attack ahead of time bringing two jump spells not to use on the bottom here on the outside but rather towards the top of the base where the uh, near where the town hall is so what that's going to allow him to do is drop the jumps over there and really opening up the top half of the base for all the wall concentration is now he has a nice wide spread on the golems there a lot of people i remember even myself way back in the day again when these teaser type bases were really popular, I would kind of just throw five golems in there and just let the wizards and witches tag behind. But it's actually smart to have a nice wide spread, as Jed did, entering this base from the teaser side, the big open side. And what he did was he spread the golems out. That way they're all attracting different point defenses, uh, you know, varied along the uh, along the, uh, the center line of the base. So you can see now he has a town hall down by those wizards in just a second there. Then he drops his, uh, his two jump spells, and you can see he had perfect perfect timing on the uh, the two free spells. Now if you have a fast moving army with a bunch of wizards all alive with heavy DPS units, you know it's actually not a horrible idea to go right into, directly into two uh, multi-target inferno towers if and only if you're confident that you can get those down in during that, what is it, six or seven second duration on the uh, free spell, depending on your level. So you can see here, Jed did two things in this uh, in this raid to plan for possible three stars. One thing was obviously bringing those two jump spells for later on in the raid, and the other thing was bringing those minions because he saw the sides were clear of any air air sweepers or air defenses. So he put three or four minions on each side of the base, and they helped a lot with the cleanup. This next attack here, you're going to see no max freeze and uh, not max heroes either. So he's going to go ahead and engage the base with a, uh, a go la loon attack, pretty traditional attack type where you go ahead and you uh, you poke your way in, hopefully using wall breakers. That way you have the extra spell. In this case, it's a he's able to bring a haste spell, three rages, and two freeze. Now that is a lot of air ammo, if you will. And he's really going to do this, and he's really going to have a lot of success with this, I should, I should say. Yeah, because there's going to be a lava hound in the enemy's clan castle. I don't know about you guys, all through the town hall levels. I just I just three-starred on my town hall 10 account. Not against the max village, but against the town hall 10. And then I just got two three-stars on uh, my town hall 9 account using this strategy, Go La Loon. And I feel like, and what I do is, you know, I, obviously not most bases are kind of adjusting. They know not to have Lava Hounds in their clan castles. It is a huge liability. I'm not going to name names, but I did see some people uh, on the Twitter sphere putting in there that Lava Hounds are overpowered now. Lava Hounds are really great in Clan Castle after the new update. But look at him. He's just stand, standing there, sad as can be. And this has really opened up the door to pull off three-star attempts without even having to deal with the Clan Castle. So that's why if you can engage a base opposite the Clan Castle, so you're not triggering it with your with your ground units right off the bat, being the golems and the heroes. If you don't trigger that Clan Castle till the very end, the Lava Bahan will just sit there. In fact, on my attack, I didn't even trigger the clan castle at all. I was able to take out the enemy queen without triggering the clan castle. So what ended up happening is that the Lava Hound never exited the, the clan castle at all. I actually brought you a video on that a few uh, episodes ago where the Lava Hounds doesn't even exit the clan castle and your balloons just destroy the clan castle, don't even have to deal with the Lava Hound. Either way, it just sits there. So these are the attacks we're seeing a lot lately. This raid here by Amadeus. Can you see the big problem in this base? Well, I'll make it easy for you. Look at this. It's a it's a three by three square. I don't know if that if the attacker wanted to do that, but it, it doesn't seem like. I mean, I guess the reason I'm bringing you this replay is to teach you that it's never a good idea to have a troll area inside your base. I know some people do it on purpose in uh, farming bases, and that's a whole different story. But what you do here is, if you do see a troll area. 
in range of somewhere that you can drop a golem, go drop a golem like Amadeus did, and then what you do is after the Archer Queen attaches onto that golem, then you drop your king. The king will take out the uh, the Archer Queen, and then he dropped his. All right, that, that that allows him to use his Archer Queen up in the northwest corner of the base. She's gonna take down another air defense, and look at that, guys. Inside the clan castle, another lava hound. I don't know if what I don't know about you guys. I know in mixed wars, dragons seem to be much more popular. But you got to understand, in these all town hall ten wars, a lot of people are much slower to change from lava hounds, as lava hounds certainly did dominate town hall ten uh, clan castles pre update. But now that they don't even leave unless they're engaged, or they don't even engage air troops, I should say, it just it makes things a whole lot easier. And if you want to go ahead and rewind and check out Amadeus's raid, you'll see that he brought three of the haste spells, you are starting to see much more uh, usage of haste added in with at least one rage spell. Obviously, more often than not, you're seeing the attackers choose to use the uh, the rage spells towards the center of a base, especially a base like this when you're going to engage the Inferno Towers. But sometimes, depending if it's an anti-3 layout or dragon flower, depending on the base you're hitting, you could actually use the rage spell earlier just so you encompass and affect more of your balloons than you would otherwise if you held off. So it all depends on the base you're hitting. But guys, I hope you enjoyed these attacks not involving all max heroes. I get a lot of requests for those, and I hope it shows that you can certainly attack your mirror on the base or, or a base in, you know comparable to your hero levels. So guys, once again, thanks for all your support. I'll see a lot of you at ClashCon, it sounds like. I'm really excited. I feel really honored, and, and it's all because of your support, guys. I really, really appreciate my audience. I just wanted to thank you guys again. Take care, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. I wanted to give you three quick ways you can help the channel out. Number one, subscribe. If you're not already, it really helps me. Number two is give a thumbs up, like the video. Number three, continue to tell your clanmates about my channel. It really helps and I really appreciate it. And also social media. You can find me, uh, follow me on Twitter at Clash underscore with underscore Ash. Also, follow me or find me on Bindle at uh, hashtag Clash with Ash. And don't forget to visit my website, www.clashwithash.com. Take care, guys.